Today I have a direct smear from a dog that has been uh, stained with right gamza, and this smear is from thoracic fluid from this dog. I want to show you the basic uh, technique for evaluating a cytological smear. So to begin with, we would start on a fairly low power. So right now I'm at the four times objective, and we want to scan that entire cytology slide to look to make sure that the types of cells we're seeing throughout the smear are similar. Because sometimes you may have clumps of cells in one area of the smear and other cell populations in other areas of that smear. So contrary to a blood smear where we may be focusing mostly on the monolayer, a cytology smear, we have to evaluate the entire smear. And the first place we like to start is just to look at the edge of the smear. So here you will see that we're at the very edge, and you can see that this is as far as the staining uh, process went. So this smear was stained in an automatic stainer with right games, as I mentioned, and that's where the stain ended. But we want to look at that edge of the smear to see if there's any large clumps of cells that could be a neoplastic cell population, for example, or if there are large organisms out there at the edge of the smear. So we would always look along that entire edge, and then we will move into the smear. And I'm not going to look at the entire smear on this uh, slide because the, the same population of cells are present throughout this smear. So we'll just move into the body of the smear a little bit, and I'm going to increase the power to the 10 times objective. And this is a good objective to use to start to look at the basic um, things on the smear. So first of all, before we forget to do it, we'll look at the background of the smear. So that is the area in between the cells. So this background, and you can see it's probably just a really pale pink background that's quite smooth. There are a few lakes of pink material here and here. And then the next step would be to look at the degree of cellularity. And you can see that this smear is very highly cellular. So all of these little blue dots are individual cells that we're seeing uh, in this particular sample. And I will be showing you at a higher magnification in a, in a few moments so that you can see the cell types. But at this low power even, we can probably tell that these are predominantly neutrophils, but certainly we'll look at that when we go up closer. Now, another thing that we can look for at our lower power then is uh, erythrocytes. And they're kind of faint at this power, and I'll have to move up a little bit here so you can see one. There is an erythrocyte there. So there's very low numbers of erythrocytes in this sample. So I'm going to move up to the 40 power now, the 48 times objective. Now, at this power, then we can definitely say that yes, we do have neutrophils. All of these with the segmented nuclei are clearly neutrophils. And then there are some larger cells, like this one here, for example, and here, and here, that we would call macrophages. Another couple of good examples down lower here. Let's bring this arrow to function. There we go. There's another nice macrophage there and there. Now the other thing that we look for, now that we're up at a higher magnification, we can uh, see that here, is disintegrated cells. And there's some nice examples in this field of those. For example, this one here is a disintegrated cell. It was probably a neutrophil, but we can't even tell that for sure now that it's disintegrated. Here's another good example here. There are several here that are all disintegrated. And what we use to determine if its cell is disintegrated or not is whether its cell border is intact. So for example, on this cell, you can clearly see the, the cell outline. So we know that that's an intact neutrophil. Whereas these other disintegrated cells that I was showing, 
You cannot see a cell border. You're seeing bits of nuclear material that are remaining from that cell that has disintegrated. And sometimes we'll get streaming nuclear material, like these little strands of purple material are probably uh, from streaming from nuclear uh, material that has disintegrated. Now, the other thing that we can start to notice at this power, and I will again go up to 100 in a few minutes here, but uh, we can start to see that there's some organisms here. So for example, right here, we've got a long filamentous slender bacterial rod that is actually outside of the cells here. Uh, and there are other instances where we can see bacteria within the cytoplasm of a neutrophil right there. And this is probably a good time to point out the fact that I mentioned this is a right gheme sustain. So with right gheme sustain, all bacteria will stain a dark blue color. So what I pointed out to you were bacteria. This is not a gram stain. So to determine if your bacteria are gram positive or gram negative, you would have to use a different stain type called a gram stain. Now, we'll just drive around a little more so that you can see a few more examples of uh, these cells and bacteria at this power before we move up in power. So once again, you can see bacteria in the cytoplasm there. You can see them faintly in one like that as well. And that might be a good place for us to try and uh, go to a, a higher power so that you can see those a little bit better. So we're going to go to 100 oil now. Now you can see that those bacteria show up even better on your 100 times power. You can see that there's some nice, long, slender, fine bacterial rods there in that cell. There's some outside of a cell here, probably come from this cell that's actually disintegrated. I'll just move up a little so we can see a few more here. Again, there's a variety of lengths of bacterial rods in this particular cell, so some of those are shorter rods right there versus these longer slender rods. So we have a nice bacterial population, we have neutrophils, and we have macrophages as the predominant, uh, neutrophils as the predominant cell type with macrophages, uh, certainly much uh, lesser so. So our interpretation of a case like this would have been septic neutrophilic inflammation. So of course this dog had uh, a condition known as pyothorax where they've actually got purulent material within their thoracic cavity caused by bacteria. Oftentimes that might be caused by a, a penetrating wound to the chest, for example. So that is the basic approach uh, to how to examine a cytology slide. In this particular case, we had an inflammatory cell population with neutrophils and macrophages. In other cases, we may have a neoplastic cell population in, in which we would have tissue cells, and then we would have to decide if those cells have features of malignancy or whether they look like a benign population. And of course, that is something that we will be going through in our, our classes.